Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? As you know, the crappie are starting to move shallower and today we're gonna break down some tips, tricks, and techniques that you can use to get on that fall crappie bite. We're gonna go old school. We're tossing a bobber and some minnows. Y'all stick around, it should be a good one. All right, guys, as you know, these crappie, they're starting to get shallow. They're starting to move up. They're starting to move into their winter patterns and for whatever reason, when it gets super cold, they go super shallow. So real quick, I'm gonna build a super common very easy to use very good setup first thing i'm gonna do is throw on my bobber stop right here i got these rubber bobber stops they just slide on the line like that i'm gonna slide that up just a piece give me a little bit of working room there next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab my my bobbers there's a tons of different sizes that you can use different techniques these are just the style that i like to use they're made by thill t-h-i-l-l -L. i think that's how you say it i don't know these are the two most common sizes that i like to use i'll use this one on a lot of our bank fishing videos make sure you smash the subscribe button because we got a lot of bank fishing videos coming down the pipe but when i'm out here on the big blue water i use these bigger ones so you can see the size difference let me show them to you side by side there both are fantastic but i like this one a little bit more just because when i'm in open water i can see it bounce around a little bit more and it takes a takes a beating better than the little one does and does not sink nearly as fast and you can add a lot of weight to it so got my bobber stop on i'm just gonna slide the line down the bobber like that bazinga right now here is the ticket when you're using these crappie um when you want to catch crappie here's the ticket right number two so two uh, aberdeen lightweight hooks that's what i got right there and they're they're made specific for panfish i don't know if you can see that but they're made specific for, for panfish guys it's got a little bit longer of a shank on it i don't know how good you can see that but it's got a little bit longer of a shank on it and that is pivotal to the tip i'm going to share with you all later on in the video when using minnows so let's let's get all this tied up i'm gonna throw you on the chest and we are going to start breaking down some brush piles looking for these fish and hopefully filling our cooler today all right so i got my bobber set out there right now there's a minnow on the bottom there and what we're going to do is first thing first thing i'm going to do is check the pile so i'm gonna let that bobber sit there i'm gonna float over the pile i'm gonna start high and i'm gonna work my way down there's several ways that you can go about locating brush piles um, there's you can use live scope like we use you can just find the brush tops on 2d 2d imaging but guys keep in mind right now the, the fish are going to start they're going to be moving they're going to start moving to shallower they're going to be looking for shallower water right now so just keep that in mind whenever you're uh, out there looking for them crappie that right now in the fall time the fish are going to be looking for shallower water they're going to be moving staging into their wintertime homes and they're going to be trying to munch down and fill up their little bellies because a hey, winter is coming so there we go so what i'm going to do is let it float in that brush pile and i'm just going to watch that bobber and guys if that bobber falls over if that bobber goes under or it takes off swimming then you know for sure we have a fish and that's what we're going to look for is in any of those to happen and so right now i'm in the brush pile i'm just gonna let it sit there and the waves are doing a fantastic job of making that bobber uh, given that minnow down there its own uh, its own action its own activity uh, to make it look like it's swimming around and the way i have it hooked that fish can still swim around very very vigorously and very very freely all right guys so we took the party a little bit shallower because as you know these fish are moving into their winter homes so i took this minnow and i, I moved it down to eight feet deep and we were at uh what were we 18 so i moved it down to eight feet deep and again i'm gonna let it sit in this brush pile and i'm just gonna watch this bobber guys and if it thing goes under we're gonna set the hook on a on a dandy hopefully again i'm using the number two golden panfish long shank hook that's very pivotal in hooking these minnows the right way let me back up some let me get on this minnow here i think we got a little bit of a knot going on here yeah we do so let's fix this knot figure out what we got going here and then get back down into them okay got me a fresh fresh minnow on there that joker is spry full of energy ready to go <laughs> so there we go i'm gonna drop them out there so what i did guys i backed off that pile a little bit i just want to get that pile of room there to to breathe because you know like we've talked about before i'm a firm believer that these crappie are as the game changes they're getting used to the sounds and sights and stuff that uh that we as fishermen make um the noises that our electronics put off things to that effect another huge difference that i should mention is that we are i am fishing in the evening time so normally we we fish in the morning time try to get it done in the morning time but today 
today I am fishing in the afternoon. Oh, that explains why I wouldn't catch nothing. I was stuck on the tree. So guys, I'm a little bit too too deep still. I'm gonna go even. I'm gonna go even shallower here. I'm gonna take off another foot. Let's grab another minnow though. I'm gonna give this pile one more one more minnow, and then we're we're gonna bounce off to the to my next spot. Let's see how they like this this minnow here. He is. Full of energy just like the last one was i made him a little bit shallower so he's going to sit a little bit higher over the pile each cast i'm going just a little bit more shallow just because i want to get a feel for the pile and see what the pile wants to do see what kind of reaction i get out of the fish got one swimming up with it let's see if he'll take that bait run off with it looks like a big one down there looking at it and guys that's that's the benefit of using live minnows is when these fish hit Oh, my bobber kind of laid over there for a second. When he's fit, there we go. Boom, got him. Oh, he spit it. He spit it. Man. But the, you know, with a jig, you find yourself working it a little bit harder, a little bit differently. But with a live minnow, guys, I mean, it's, it's a live minnow. You know, it's hard to duplicate the real, real, the real dinner. You know what I mean? So that big and she followed it out, but she, uh, she spit it. And then I just cast it right in front of her and she wanted nothing to do with it, rightfully so. I just pegged her in the mouth with it. So guys, if that minnow isn't moving as much as you'd like, you can always pop your rod tip, make that, make that minnow dan dance down there a little bit more than he already is. Give it a little motion, you know, pop it across that pile. Just to, just to give it that extra little something something that them fish might want to might want to eat on i got some hard nosed fish here oh, oh oh here we go i got one looking at it let's watch that bobber let's watch that bobber there and guys if that bobber goes under like that boom we're gonna set the hook and we're gonna set the hook on a dandy boy holy buckets are you kidding me holy buckets dude <laughs> guys that's what we're after holy cow Look at that fish. Are you kidding me? Monster crappie. Monster, dude, that thing is a tank. Look at that fish, guys. Holy cow, look at that fish. Look at that fish. Whoo! That's probably a, that's probably a 13, 14 inch fish. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. Let's see. There you go, 13 and a half. 13 and a half inch fish right there ladies and gentlemen that's what you're after <laughs> on that afternoon bite so there you go that's what you're after right there so if we set up that minnow let's let that joker go big beautiful fish there that's why you're going to cruise around like i said we're, we went from deep water to shallower water adjusted that rig down put that minnow right in the strike zone as you saw i was working the minnow through that pile start at a different depth and work it up or down whatever you want to do and then you pull out them dandies them dandies like that ladies and gentlemen let's keep going let's get on some more of them big old fish and guys you just gotta that's what i mean these gold number two aberdeen hooks they are fan fantastic on these fish i'm gonna the, the technique i've been using recently oh geez the technique i've been using recently is i'm gonna go in through the mouth i'm gonna go in the mouth out the gills so it's, it hasn't even punctured the fish yet going away from you you're gonna roll it and you're gonna stick it through his upper back oh i got that slime on my hands from that fish and you're gonna go through his upper back so we don't penetrate anything vital like that and guys this leaves that fish with plenty of room to swim around get caught and you can use it multiple times when you do this method so that pile's right here i'm just gonna drop right back down on top of it i'm gonna drop right back into it check my depth i'm a little high now which is super common because i just caught a fish so that bobber stop is gonna it got caught on that first islet guys i have yet to find a fishing pole where these rubber bobber stops don't get caught on that rubber islet and yeah it can be frustrating but we just work the problem and you know let it be and we just deal with deal with what we got <laughs> so there we go following that same trajectory got that fish down there hooked it in a manner that lets that fish swim around very aggressively it can be seen by all the fish down there and guys we're about to hit the pile right now and so what i like to do is just like i said keep my eyes on that bobber if that bobber lays over or goes underwater we're gonna we're gonna reel one in 
But guys, you don't have to use live scope. You do not need live scope to fish this method. That's why I'm showing it to you. This is the traditional, you know, take your kids out, get some bobbers. It's fun for everyone to watch the bobbers because you're just going to cast into piles like this and you're just going to watch. And I'll tell you right now, when that bobber disappears, it is a fun fight from that point on. And that bobber bouncing around on the water like that, it gives it plenty of additional up and down movement in addition to that fish. Oh, see that bobber swimming away from me? Ooh. I may have had a fish right there guys i may have had a fish right there all right this is my last cast on this pile and we're gonna go to my next spot all right guys like i said this we're, at, we're pulling up to our next spot and i want to get a fresh minnow on again i want to run run you through how i have recently been hooking these uh these minnows and this is thanks to caleb over there at 903 fish and y'all can check him out on youtube he uh He's a great asset to the crappie fishing community. He's very knowledgeable as well and has a fantastic fan base. A lot of y'all have came over from his um, channel, but what I do is go through the mouth, out the gill, around, and hook it in his back. And that's so that that fish, we can get more casts on him. The fish can still swim around um, very vigorously, and we can get more use out of each minnow. So... Running this one out, I'm going to stay back off this pile a little bit. As I've shown you in videos before, staying back a little bit helps a lot. So I'm back about 15 feet from the pile. Going to just let the minnow do its thing. Just going to float it through there, guys. Let the minnow do the work. The fish know what they're looking for. And again, if that bobber falls over, it goes under, or starts to swim off, we're going to set the hook and bring in a dandy of a fish, hopefully. Put that back out there. Sometimes them, sometimes them weights flip over and they get tangled up, but that's no big deal. There we go. There we go, got him. <laughs> and see, that's what happens. You wanna go past that pile a little bit and bada bing, bada boom. You pick up some fish like that. There we go. Oh, got a looker, got a looker. Let's see what happens here. I'm just gonna, there we go boom oh man that was a nice fish guys that was a nice fish so let's get this let's get this joker hooked back up because guys this pile it might be it might be time for it to turn on hopefully these fish cooperate with me Woo! this joker's wiry this oh man there we go this joker here is wiry all right so let's get back down in there There we go, there we go, here we go, here we go. Again, just playing with the depth, putting that minnow down in there, just to where they can see it. There we go. Oh. Well, coming to you battered, beaten, and wore out, but that's all right, guys. Any day on the water is better than no time on the water. I hope y'all were able to pick up some tips and tricks for using the bobber, how to hook a minnow, things to that effect. Good day out on the water, picked up some knowledge. As I said, the fish are starting to move into their winter patterns, which means they are on the move right now. We're looking for shallower water. They should be up in the creeks very, very soon. So make sure y'all smash the subscribe button because we're gonna be dropping some creek videos like always. We always follow the fish into the shallower waters and we try to do what we can to teach you everything I can about fishing for crappie. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If y'all like this one, I think you'll enjoy this one and we'll catch y'all in the next one. Don't stop the dangle. Peace.